done great things. Great things in our lives, oh God. Bless your holy name, Lord. Bless your holy name.
Oh, we worship. Let's worship the name of our holy God. What a privilege we are tonight. Come in the presence of the most living holy God, the only holy God who came down from heaven without looking at our shortcomings and weaknesses. Wash us with his precious blood. Purchase us. Given us his son and daughters. Putting us to sit us with the right hand of the Father. Oh, sitting in the heavenly realms with the Christ. Tonight we are privileged. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Tonight we are privileged. Oh, Dabar Ragada. Shakabar Ragada. Huda Rabala Gada Ragada Jagalagas. Father, this evening, during this miracle night service, our hearts are full of thanksgiving. Lord, when we look around the world, people are struggling to live, fighting for their lives. But tonight, through the loving kindness, everlasting love, mercies, and your unfailing faithfulness, you have brought us together, O oh God. We can smile, we can speak, we can wash, we can pour our hearts tonight. What a joy you got, what a faithfulness you are, oh God. What a friend we have, oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, as a house of prayer family, we totally surrender to you. We come into the congregation into our hands, oh God. We pray for those who are here. We pray for those who are still on the way, oh God. You will bring your people. We pray for our congregation members, those could not make it because we have this commitment. We pray, Lord, your presence shall be upon them, O God. Tonight, the power and the glory and the presence of Jesus shall fill into this sanctuary. That is the only thing. We carry the authority of Jesus when we leave this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We commit the servant of God, the woman of God in the hand of Jesus. Lord, use her to speak to us, O God. Any form of interruption, we cancel it. We ask the strong man of Kanini to be paralyzed. We sit under the open heaven, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Please take us. Praise the Lord and good evening, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. All the time. And that is his. I think we can give a better clap offering. What? Uh, tell the Lord, Lord. Amen. And we over to somebody and say, my neighbor, I am glad to see you this evening. Amen. May God bless you. Uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome you all to this beautiful Miracle Night service. My elder daughter, Christine, welcome back. We missed you dearly. Even I forgot how my elder looks like. <laughs> welcome back, my elder. We know it is an assignment. May God bless. Even Pastor Jesse, welcome back. We're happy to have you. We're happy to have you. Amen. All of you are here. May God bless you. May the Lord bless you. Don't miss the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not taking any much time. Uh, how many of us were blessed on Sunday? Hallelujah. Uh, we were blessed, the ministry. The time from the airport straight to the meeting. We have not given the time to rest the woman of God, but every meeting, the Lord moved. The presence of Jesus. You know, in my little experience, of 25 years of full-time pastor. One thing I understood, ministry of the word is not about your eloquence, your knowledge. Ministry of the word is all about when a servant of God stands, the presence of God that comes along with the word of God. That shows the relationship that person has the throne of God. And we enjoy, pastor, we are so happy. So, are we excited? Let's put our hands together. Welcome Pastor Labriska Weissman to come and take over and minister as the Lord leads.
so much. So I'm surprising my brother tonight. I hope he still loves me after this. You don't need me to sing a song, that's for sure. I think the best singers in all of Zambia must be in this house. Perhaps some of the best singers in the whole world are in this house. And I'm so blessed by your ministry. But I'm going to offer my humble song before the Lord tonight also. And you may have heard it before. Maybe you didn't. I've been singing this song since I was a very young girl.
tell you something else? Hallelujah. Your ladder will be greater than your past. You will be blessed more than you could ask. Despite all that has been done, I'm here to prophesy to you tonight, family of God, the best is yet to come. And your ladder will be greater. Boy, yes, your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater What lies ahead of me is greater. Whatever behind you, if it's good, if it's bad, if it's ugly, no matter how beautiful, no matter how terrible, whatever is behind you is behind you. Don't bring it up in here today. Don't bring the past up in here today. Where does the past belong? The past belongs in the past. And I'm going to tell you something. The God that I serve owns time. He owns it. He is the God who inhabits eternity. Time is under his ownership. And I don't know if you believe in time travel or not. But this Jesus who is the same yesterday, today, and forever who holds time in his hands, he can cover all of your past. I believe in full recovery. I believe in full restoration. I believe in shalom. The shalom of Yah is nothing missing. Nothing broken. And this little piece of time that I live in right now is about this big. It might even be smaller than that. Because you see, I was made for eternity and I'm going to live in that place. Forever, forever, forever. Never, forever. You better believe what lies ahead of you is greater. But I want to tell you tonight on this planet Earth, I would have fainted. I would have fainted if I didn't believe I could see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hello, my friends. It's good to see you living in this land of the living. Would you like to see the goodness of the Lord? <laughs> Oh, Father God, will you pray with me right now? Father, we thank you for your goodness this night. We thank you that you own the time and you take our past and you redeem it. We thank you, Father, that you own the future and it is in your hands. You are the Lord of what lies ahead of me. Father God, we thank you that you are the God of the here and now and I will not miss this moment. I will not miss what God is doing in the earth today. I will not be distracted. I will not worry about the future and I will not let the past bite at my heels. Jesus is Lord today. And Father, we welcome you and we welcome the word of Almighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, this book right here is like a mirror to me. And I, did you have something else to say, brother? <laughs> this book is like a mirror to me, and I find myself on many of these pages. Maybe you're like me. And I want you to come and look at me <laughs> in the book of Song of Solomon because I'm right there. In the book of Song of Solomon, you're going to find me. And I'm just probably thinking that I'm also going to find you. Pastor, I might want to get my glasses. I'm not as young as I used to be. Hallelujah. On the inside, I know I'm about 16 years old. 
Now, don't I look a lot smarter with these glasses on? Okay, in the book of Song of Solomon. I am in chapter 6. Let's see if you are in chapter 6. Let's look in this mirror and see if you are in chapter 6. Is it okay if we study the word of God for a few minutes tonight? Praise the Lord. In Song of Solomon chapter 6, I found myself. For one thing, I found myself because my name is Irene. Is anybody else in here named Irene tonight? My name is Labriska Irene Wiseman. And the name Irene in Hebrew is Shulam. Shulam. Does that sound familiar to anybody, Shulam? Did you read that in your Bible? And there is a Shulamite woman. The book of Song of Solomon is all about a woman who is from Shulam. So that's one reason I know this is about me. But if your name is not Irene and your name is not Shulam, I think we might find you right here. Because you are the redeemed of the Lord. And verse 10 is talking about you. It says, who is this that shines like the dawn? As beautiful as the moon, as bright as the sun, as awesome as an army with banners. They're talking about the Shulamite woman. Why don't you look at the person nearest you and say, this verse is about you. You are as awesome as an army with banners. But let's look down in verse 13 and let's see what the groom has to say about this beautiful woman. He says, do you know what you're seeing when you look at the Shulamite? You are looking at a company of two armies. Not just one, but two. Everybody looking at her said, she's like an army. Now you brothers, you brothers, didn't you always want a bride that looked like an army? That may not be your favorite image of a woman. But this guy right here, he liked it. And I tell you something. I am betrothed. Uh, anybody else betrothed? I am betrothed to the king of kings. And I know that this book that I'm reading right here is a reflection of my heavenly bridegroom and myself. And so I know then that my heavenly bridegroom looks at me and he sees an army. No, he sees two armies. Double power, double authority, double success, double advancement. Hallelujah to Jesus. But I'm also in chapter 8. And in chapter 8, you'll find me in verse 5. Verse 5 says, who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on the arm of her beloved? Now, wait a minute. In chapter 6, she's marching into town like not one army, but two armies. But in chapter 8, she's got a lean going on. She's been in the wilderness place. She's coming out. She's coming out leaning. Do you know that it's okay for you to be in either one of these positions? Because I cannot find any scripture in here where he rejects her, where he abandons her, where he says you're not powerful enough, you're not good enough, and I'm going to leave you behind. I can't find that scripture. What I find is a, a lover who rejoices when his bride is strong and powerful and a lover who is faithful when she needs to lean on him because of the wilderness that she has been through. I, maybe I'm in the company of some people who have walked through some wilderness place. And if you are wondering tonight, is it okay if I have a limp? Is it okay if I need to lean a little? Yes, my friend, it is okay because it's not about you. It's not about how powerful you can be. I love the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13, it's one of my favorite verses. But sometimes. 
Sometimes I might be leaning on him while I'm getting it done. The Bible says a righteous man falls. Really? I thought the righteous was supposed to stay on his feet, large and in charge all the time. Oh, no, the righteous man might fall. Is it okay? The Bible says he gets back up. He falls and he gets back up. He falls and he gets back up. He falls and he gets back up. That's a righteous man. He might fall seven times, but he keeps getting up. Why don't you look at the person beside you and say, if you see me down, just wait a minute because I'll be back up. Yes, sir. (laughs) I want us to look at a prophet of God in this Bible. I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of people, if I were to talk about the most famous prophet in the whole Bible, they might know who I'm talking about. If I told you, let's turn to the page in your Bible that's about the most famous prophet of all time, you might know exactly which page I'm talking about. This prophet's name is Elijah. Do you like this, brother? Elijah, he's known for being the prophet of what? Fire. Elijah, the prophet of fire. So let's go read about him in the first Kings. The book of First Kings. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word, oh God. Now in First Kings, if you want to get your page open to about chapter 19, I want to tell you what's happening in chapter 18 while you're turning your holy Bible. Or while you're clicking that screen. These fancy high-tech people up here on the front row. Click, click. Hallelujah. In chapter 18, this prophet of fire, he has gathered the evil prophets of Baal on a mountaintop. I'm telling you in this moment, the prophet of Elijah, he is in his element. He is walking in all power. He's walking in authority. He is so confident on this day that while he has the evil prophets of Baal on the mountaintop, he mocks them and he laughs at them. He is a man outnumbered. There are more of them than there are of him. There are more on on the other side than there are on the man of God's side. He's in a lonely place, but he doesn't feel lonely. Hallelujah. He stands alone, but he doesn't feel like he's alone. He's so confident That he stands and being outnumbered, he laughs and he mocks. I don't know how many of you have been in a fight before. Pastor was sharing with me today (laughs) about a fight he got in. Years ago when he was a young man, some anti-Christians ganged up on him and a group of people who were gathered to worship. And Pastor, you said they beat you good. So I don't know what could have happened on that day that that Elijah was up there. It looks to me like he could have got beaten real good because he is sassing and brassing. He is bossing and flossing. He is telling them, cry out to your God to send down the fire. Oh, maybe your God is on a vacation. Oh, maybe your God is sleeping. Cry louder. Oh, they're freaking out. They're cutting themselves. The Bible says they're raving and going on, begging their false God to send fire. But it was not within their God's power. And Elijah knew it. This man walked with God. That is why he was confident. That is why he could stand outnumbered and not be the least bit concerned. So he stood on that mountain and he said, enough of your noise. Let me talk to my God. He had him soak the altar. He built the altar first. Some people try to make a sacrifice without building an altar, Pastor. Some people try to roar against the enemy, but they didn't even build an altar yet. He built the altar of God. He put the sacrifice on it. And before he asked God to send the fire, he soaked the altar with water. He made it just as impossible as he possibly could. He also, you remember, he's having a good time insulting these people. And so it was an insult further for him to pour water on that altar because they were in a famine. They were in a drought. There had been no rain for three years. So to waste the water on the altar was the cherry on top of insulting those wicked people. 
And once the altar was good and wet and impossible for anybody to strike a fire, it could only be set aflame by God himself. Elijah prayed one simple prayer. He said, God, show these people who you are. And send now the fire. And immediately the fire of God came to that altar and set it ablaze. Isn't this amazing? Wow. Look at the power of this confident man of God. He's like this woman. In Song of Solomon chapter 6. He's not just one army. He's two armies in one man. But he comes over here. In the next chapter. And everything changes. And in verse 1, let's start finding out why things change for our brother Elijah, who is so confident. 19 verse 1 says, Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he did what? He told her how he killed all of her favorite prophets with a sword. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, May the gods kill me. May they severely kill me if I do not make your life like one of those prophets by this time tomorrow. Oh, my. Now, that's just one woman talking to him. I need somebody in this room to hear me. One woman made one threat. And this is what happened to the man who with 450 people against him, he had a big mouth full of power, authority, and boldness. But one woman sends one message that is one sentence long. Just one sentence. And here's what, here, here's what happened to Elijah. It tells us down here in verse 4. He went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a tree and he prayed to die. He said, I've had enough, Lord, take my life. Over one sentence from one woman, this man of God was so reduced. Now, see, he's down here in the in-between place. He's gone from being two armies to being in a wilderness place. God didn't tell him to go in that wilderness. He ran all by himself. He ended up there because of his faith on that day. Now, he had faith on that mountain for God to send fire. But when the attack came against him, he only had the kind of faith that I'm going to go in the wilderness place. I feel like I belong over here in the wilderness. I think I'm going to curl up under this tree and God just let me die. I don't know if you've ever felt like Elijah before. I don't know if you ever felt like quitting. I don't know if you ever felt like giving up. I don't know if you ever wished that you were just dead. But I know exactly how he feels because I was there. I was driving my car down the road more than one time, and I would pray. I said, God, all I've got to do is let go. With I live in a mountainous region in the United States. There are many hills. They're very steep, and there are many sharp curves. And I said, God, all I've got to do is put my foot on that gas pedal and let go of the steering wheel. Nobody will ever know I did it on purpose. They'll think it was a car accident. And God saved my life more than one time because I felt like this man, I just wanted to die. I was so sick of the lies that people had told me. I was sick of the threats that they had made against me. And so, judge me how you will, but I'm in good company. Yes, that's me. That's me in Song of Solomon, chapter 6. I'm like two armies coming to town. But uh-oh, this is actually also me. <laughs> in 1 Kings chapter 19, laying under a bush praying to die. Is that okay? Is that okay? Am I still a woman of God? Am I still a child of God? Does he still love me? Do you still love me? Because the mightiest prophet that you have ever known. This man was so mighty. Do you know he didn't even die yet? He still ain't dead. This woman is saying, I will have you dead by this time tomorrow. But I read some more pages, my friends. And you know what I found out? He's still not dead. 
What if he had known that that day he was crying to die? Look at God. Just look at God. The man's praying to die, and he still isn't dead. And this is, uh, let's see, it's about 7.15 on August the 14th, 2024, and he's still not dead. Woo! <laughs> Does God know how to show his power or what? That's God's answer to this threat. You threaten my prophet. You say you're going to kill him. Guess what? He's still not dead. Wonder what happened to her? Does anybody know what happened to her? I come over here. I read a few more pages. This guy, this guy Elijah, while he's laying there under that bush, an angel comes, pushes him, wake up, Elijah. Eat. The angel has brought food for him. He eats. He drinks. And then, do you think he just jumped up and said, wow, I'm so blessed. The angel of the Lord came and brought me food to eat. Let me just go right back into town and I'll tell that liar what for. Nope. He ate the food the angel brought. And he rolled over and he went back to sleep again. What is wrong with this mighty prophet of God? The angel comes again. Wake up, Elijah. Eat. You're going to go on a long journey. So Elijah ate, and he stood up, and he starts moving. The righteous man falls, but he gets back up. They may have judged you because they saw you down. But my friend, you have an uprising. There is an uprising they might be judging your condition and your situation right now, but I declare over everybody in this room, you have an uprising. And now Elijah's uprising, it didn't look real good. It didn't look real pretty. He's trudging through the desert. He's walking. It takes him 40 days to get to where he's going. God said, you get up on that mountain, boy, I want to talk to you. He gets up on the mountain of God. And do you think that the mighty prophet of God had a prayer meeting and worshiping and singing and praising the Lord when he got to the mountaintop? No, sir. He went in a dark cave and he curled up again to just sleep. He couldn't think according to God's plans and purposes for him. He could not speak according to God's plans and purposes for him. The lies of the enemy had the man of God paralyzed. So, God wakes him up in that cave. He says, Elijah, get out of this hole. Get out of this dark hole. I want to talk to you. But before Elijah can get out of that cave, if you keep reading it, before he gets out of that cave, a mighty wind, a tornado comes whipping through that mountain, breaking up the rocks, shaking the earth, and an earthquake comes. The earth is shaking, rocking and reeling, a blazing fire roars across the mountain. Because you know that's the way God moves, right? Oh, yes. God moves in what is loud and mighty and powerful and strong. We know God. We know how God moves. He always does it this way. Loud and boisterous, showing his might and his power. Oh, but no. But no. Because the Bible says God was not in any of those acts of power and force. He wasn't in any of it. Something began to happen. Elijah didn't need a big noise. Elijah didn't need that strong wind and fire. All he needed was the voice of the one who made him. You know, you and I, we get in some situations sometimes. We think we know what we need. You know, I need them to just sing this kind of song. I need the pastor to just preach this kind of message. If it could just happen this way, everything would turn around and be all right for me. But my friend, I'm going to promise you right now, the thing that you need right now more than anything else is the voice of the one who made you. Oh, if you knew the power of the voice of the one who made you. The difference it makes, the change, what happens when he speaks. I think I got some people in here with me right now that you know. <laughs> because you have heard his voice. And you know what happens when you hear the voice of God. 
I think God is looking for people who are hungry for his voice, for people who say, I don't need that rushing wind. I don't need that blazing fire. I don't need the earth shaking. Oh, God, just let me hear your voice. So the Bible says what happened next is a soft, gentle whisper. Some translations say a gentle breeze. A gentle whisper came. Elijah perked up. Something quickened in the man of God. He had the strength to get out of that dark hole now. But I'm going to tell you, he did not walk out of that hole without taking an action. He's about to go stand before the Lord God Almighty. And he does a very strange thing. You know what the man of God did? He took his mantle. Now, you know, the mantle, that's the identifier. Mantle tells who you are, what you are, and what you do. He wore the mantle of a prophet. He took that mantle and he wraps himself in it. His head. That mantle don't go on your head, Elijah. You look silly. But Elijah was determined. If I'm going to go stand before the Lord God Almighty, I better get my whole head in who I am. He was making an effort, moved through the wilderness. He's making an effort trying to get out of that dark hole. He's making an effort. He does not look as powerful as he did on that mountain calling fire down. He doesn't look so strong and powerful, but the man of God is at least moving. He's got that mantle wrapped around his head. His ears are covered with his calling to be a prophet. His eyes are covered with the call of God on his life to be a prophet. And he presents himself to God with not his face showing, but the identification that God had put on his life because God called him a prophet. He didn't go stand before God as weak as pitiful, as on the run. But that's who he was on the inside. On the inside, he's cowering, he's weak, but he knows he's standing before the one who made him. And so he puts the identification that God put on him. He puts it out front. And he goes and he stands before God. And all you see on his shoulders is the identification. This is a prophet. A prophet who's scared. A prophet who's on the run. A prophet who just wants to die. Pastor, prophets aren't supposed to be like that. But the mightiest prophet I read about in my Bible, he had that kind of day. He goes and stands before God, and he laments. He complains to God, and he tells God, this is what's happened. This is what's going on. Things are bad back there. And so you know what the Lord God did? You know what God had to say about all of that? Nothing. God didn't have one word. <laughs> Not even one. He didn't even pat him on the back. He didn't hug him. He didn't pick him up in his arms and cheer him up. He didn't say, did they really do that to you, Elijah? He didn't say, I hear you and I understand. Everything's going to be okay. God had not one word to say in response to Elijah's complaint. Elijah thought he needed God to deal with that present situation with a pat on the back, an encouraging, uplifting word, and a strike of vengeance against the enemy. But instead, this is what God said. Literally, how does God do this? Elijah says, they're trying to kill me. I'm the only one left. And God's answer to all that is, you go right back where you came from. You go right back where you came from, boy. You go right back. And I want you to anoint. Who was it he anointed? Hold on. He said, you go the way that you came. You anoint Hazael as king of Aram. And you anoint Jehu as king over Israel. And you anoint Elisha to be your successor. Now get on out of here and do your job. And do you know what we begin to see happen immediately? Is Elijah is back in business. Elijah is back on track. How does this happen? He's back on track. He's back on. He didn't have a pat on the back. God didn't say, oh, poor Elijah. Instead, listen to me. God gave Elijah marching orders. God called him what he was. God treated him like what he was. God didn't treat the man of God like he was poor and pitiful and pathetic. And I'm going to tell you something. God's not going to you that way either because you are not you are not pitiful you are not pathetic you are not going 
to be overcome by your enemy. The only way your enemy will overcome you is if you go lay down and let him. God will talk to you according to what you are in his eyes. Do you remember hearing about a man named Gideon? A man named Gideon in the Bible, in the book of Judges. He was hiding from his enemies. And the angel of the Lord came to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. He doesn't look like a mighty warrior to me. He's hiding from his enemies. You know, we want to just acclaim and we just admire, we elevate, and we exalt the pastor who stays so strong all the time and never has a problem, never has a battle. We want to acclaim that Christian who always has a smile on their face. Oh, life is so perfect for them. They only have just mountaintop experiences. They never go through the valley of the shadow of death. But my friends, wherever you are, whatever you are walking through, whatever you look like in that condition, your God only sees you as what he knows you are. And if it looks like you're hiding from your enemy, God still sees you as a mighty warrior. Oh, and all you need in that moment is marching orders. When God just gives you a go. Get up and go. Oh, I believe God got friends right here. I've got friends in this room right now that what you need this night, I, you know, I love to give people hugs. I love to pat people on the back. And I know some people have had times that are so hard, and I want to end it all for you and just let life be perfect and good and wonderful for you. But I know you don't need that from me. What you really need is the marching orders that come from God. Hey. And you know all the things. All the things that we seek God for. We seek him for a blessing. We seek him for our daily bread. We seek him for our education, for our job, for our spouse. We seek God for so many things. But where is that person who will seek his voice? I want to know where is that person who will draw up close enough to hear his whisper. Hmm. I don't know everybody's name here tonight. I do know Tanny because I met her last Friday at the women's meeting. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, Pastor, are you listening to me, Pastor? You are? Okay, keep listening. Don't stop listening. Pastor, what did I tell Tanny? You don't know what I told her? Why don't you know? I was whispering. Why couldn't you hear me? You were close enough. Where is that person who will draw close and say, whisper in my ear? Holy Spirit, whisper in my ear. Holy Spirit, for I long to hear your secret whisper in my ear. Holy Spirit, for I long to see your goodness. You're uprising. You're uprising. It is your season. It is your time for you to rise up, for you get up and move. And don't you worry. Nobody is waiting on you to look like you're an army. Nobody's waiting on you to look like you're two armies. God already sees you that way. We might see you leaning and limping, coming out of the wilderness. But you just get up and start moving. You get up and go. 
And I'm going to tell you, whatever you go after, whatever you're in pursuit of, let it be. The whisper of God. The voice of God that requires you getting very close. Closer than you have ever been. Draw nigh unto me, says the Lord, and I will draw nigh unto you. Thank you for coming to play for me. I'll sing it again. Whisper in my ear, Holy Spirit. Can somebody stand to their feet and pray this with me? Whisper in my ear, Holy Spirit. For I long to hear your secrets. Open up my eyes. Holy Spirit, for I long to see your goodness whisper in my ear. Holy Spirit, for I long to hear your secrets open up my eyes. Holy Spirit, for I long to see your goodness. If you will lift your hands up to the Lord, I'm going to pray a prayer over God's children right now. Father God, I'm asking you for ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Oh, Jesus, said, okay, Ababa. Father, I've got brothers who are in this room and all they need right now is their marching orders. Oh God, they've been waiting on this wilderness to end. They thought they had to look like an army before they could walk out of this wilderness. But oh my God, let them come out leaning. Let them come out limping. Let them come out because the voice of the Lord has beckoned to them. Get up and go. Marching orders, marching orders, marching orders in the name of Jesus. God, I've got some sisters who were grieved because they wanted to look like a warrior woman. They're grieved because they wanted to be that mighty warrior and look like they were two armies waving banners of victory. But God, this wilderness has been a long time. This wilderness has been a stubborn place. But oh, my Father God, I pray you open their ears. You open their women's eyes, Lord. Open your daughter's eyes to see. Just get up and go. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter about this wilderness place. Your position is in the identity that God Almighty has declared over you. And he says, get up and go. Get up and go. Father God, I'm asking you to give that spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you and open the eyes of our heart that we may see so that we may know. Open our eyes and open our ears. I declare in the name of Jesus, the people in this room are anointed to hear, to hear Orekiaba. Anointed to hear. Your ears are anointed to hear. Your ears are anointed to hear the voice of your beloved. open up our ears open up our eyes to have that spiritual vision to see the best is yet to come the best is yet to come the best is yet to come hallelujah Jesus glory to God I don't I don't know that we have time to pray for everybody in this room but I want to very specifically pray I want to lay my hands and come into agreement with your destiny. There's some people in this room right now that you've been wondering why this wilderness is such a long, stubborn place. I want you to come together in this front and we're going to lay our hands on you and we're going to decree that freedom, freedom of passage. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, I'm going to ask you to come. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hey, hey. We worship you, a God. We worship you, a God. Anyone would like 
have a special prayer. Your wilderness journey becoming long. Take a step of faith to the friend and the man of God will pray for you as we are in agreement. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Tonight, expect a breakthrough. Tonight, expect a breakthrough. Tonight, hallelujah. Oh, that marching order, hallelujah. Tonight, the heaven is releasing that marching order. Hallelujah. It doesn't, it is not the what you are going through. God is looking at you with the heavenly destiny He has given to you. Oh, Riga Baba Shaka Baba Baba Ragada Ruda Dira Bala Raka Baba Rajala Gada Rode Ravala Shanga Baba Baba Rajala. Believe it has next few minutes. Don't look at anyone. Hallelujah. Even if you are standing where you are, connect to the throne of God. Tonight we are receiving that marching order. Hallelujah. Tonight you are receiving the marching order. Hallelujah. Yes, you are walked through. Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, well, to reach Mount Carmel is tonight. Maybe you are here by years. You have been walking. Tonight is the night of victory and breakthrough. As the, as the woman of God has released the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Connect to a life. Connect to a situation. Connect the threat. Connect the crisis you are experiencing. And, and connect it through the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Father, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, God. Worship you, worship you, worship you. Jesus, we glorify you. Duna Gamma Bala Gada Rakamana Jagale Sangavara Gada Rude Dira Bala Ragale Blood of Jesus Hallelujah Lord we worship you Father we glorify you a God Lord we glorify you a God Jesus we glorify you a God Lord we glorify you a God Hallelujah Oh we glorify you Tell the Lord tonight, tonight I am not going to leave this place. I am not going to sleep the way Elijah slept. I am not going to complain. I am going to hear the whisper. The Lord, you are speaking to me personally. Hallelujah. The personal message, the personal voice of Jesus, what he has been speaking to you. Hallelujah. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Elijah said, enough, Lord, enough. It is not the time to say enough. It is the time to get to the marching order and go back to our assignment. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you are connecting to the throne of God, may you receive the healing grace. May you receive the restoring power. May you receive the breakthroughs. May you receive the voice of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Father, we glorify you, O God. Tonight, O Jesus, O God. The way, Lord, you visited Elijah. Tonight, visit us, O God. Tonight, visit us, O God. Tonight, visit us. Tonight, visit us. Tonight, visit us. Tonight, visit us. Holy Spirit, tonight, visit us. Us, Jesus tonight visit us. Father tonight visit us. Jesus tonight visit us. Holy Spirit visit us. Father visit us. Lord visit us. Lord visit us. Lord visit us. Visit us. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Holy Spirit visit us tonight. Jesus visit us tonight. Hallelujah. 
bar jala shanga ba 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 bar gal ruda ga bar gada ra bal gara gale shanga bar gada ra ude ra bal gada kamane adura gam ra bal gada ruda bar gada gal blood of jesus hallelujah blood of jesus hallelujah holy spirit hallelujah father hallelujah Lord hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Holy Spirit hallelujah Father hallelujah Holy Spirit hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Adura gam ragadam da kramana sakamala jagala gad raude alkabarage raude dhira raba baba baba oh Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Holy Spirit we worship you Jesus we glorify you oh God oh amba baba 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 rakala jagala ida dura baba oh may the heaven connect you oh may the lord connect you a man of God a great prophet of God who was almost given up As the word of God came today the voice of God brought him back to the track whatever discouragement pain disappointment situations you are going through tonight the voice that spoke to Elijah the voice that has spoken to Elijah the voice that has spoken to Elijah may speak to you tonight 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 the voice that has spoken to Elijah may speak to you tonight hallelujah hallelujah Juda ba 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 ra ka la sha ka ba 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 ra ja la ga da ra u de al ka ba ra ga da ra u de ja ga la ga da ru da ba 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 ra ja la ga da ra u da la ra ga de sha ga ba ba.
your presence, your presence, Lord. Your presence, your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Sing your presence. Lord thank you God for accomplishing your assignment in our lives we receive the marching order from the heaven we will not be victimized by the crisis situations pressure thank you for seeing us not what we are going through but seeing us through your divine appointment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for using your servant. We are leaving this place with that authority. Brought back the Elijah on the track with authority and power. Lifted Gideon to the divine assignment. Thank you, Lord. Continue to strengthen us, O oh God. Cover us throughout your night under your wings. Remaining days of the week, speak to us. Bring us on Sunday morning with the great testimonies. Thank you, Lord. Refresh your servant. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now 
and forever. Amen and amen. May God bless you richly. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. You receive the word. May God bless you. See you on Sunday.